Hello people, today we are looking at purposeful language and we are very purposeful with language both in the way that we listen to it, decode it and speak when we are leading and when we are coaching and mentoring. So decoding presuppositions, a presupposition is an NLP term for something that is assumed by the speaker. So let's have a look at this. When we are identifying and questioning assumptions, we have to get out of our own way. What that means is we have to literally put our mind somewhere else, remove our self-talk, be so curious in what the other person is saying that we actively listen and question the meaning that others may assign to specific words. We have to learn to put ourselves aside. I love this quote. I have no idea who said it. The true communication, true communication excellence lies in the art of unraveling the depths of meaning beyond the mere surface of words. For assuming meaning from a single word is like mistaking a ripple for the entire ocean. Keep this in mind when you are working with anyone communicating with anyone, in a relationship with anyone, because we are always carrying our own judgments and filters. And what's wonderful about getting into the NLP mindset and certainly getting really good at language is it puts a barrier between us and our judgment. And the longer we do it, the more we are able to be curious about the structure of somebody's language and care very little about the content. And this is a wonderful thing because it helps us to be less judgmental. So what we're really doing here is we are building an image or representation of the attitudes and beliefs of the speaker. We are literally mapping the constructs of their mind. So let's begin. When we've identified assumptions, we use directional questioning to gain clarity. We want to develop the picture. We move upwards to the abstract or big picture, downwards to the specifics or the details, and sideways to the equal. In NLP, we look at nine different linguistic assumptions or presuppositions. Number one, existence. Number two, possibility and necessity. Number three, cause and effect. Number four, complex equivalence. Number five, awareness. Number six, time. Number seven, adverb or adjective. Number eight, exclusive or inclusive ors. And number nine, ordinal. Be at ease about all the jargon here. A linguistic assumption is merely an idea that is indicated by the words that people use, okay? And as for the other words on this page, you will understand them very shortly. Here we go, existence. Existence is so simple, it is just nouns. We have three types of nouns in the English language, common nouns, abstract nouns, and normalizations. Oh, sorry, abstract nouns, which are normalizations, and proper nouns. So common nouns, pen, table, phone abstract nouns, anything you cannot put in a bucket, discussion, communication, identification, passion, love, joy, happiness, and proper nouns, people and places. So let's look at this statement. I am too late in life to start my own business. It's more sensible to stay where I am and get my pension, then I'm safe. If we want to take it upwards, towards the bigger picture, we may choose to ask, what would be the purpose of you setting up your own business? If we want to take it sideways, i.e. what else is that? Then, and bear in mind, we are fishing, we are curious to, as to what this people, what these, what this person actually means by using this statement. So, would you advise every other person at the same time of their life to stay in their job? Is there another way to be safe? We're addressing the normalization of safety. And even though safe here is used as an adjective, 
it relates to the concept of safety, which is a nominalization. If we want to move downwards, how precisely is your pension impacted if you choose to set up a business now? We're getting a lot more detail. Okay, number two, possibility and necessity. Possibility, any words like can, might, possible. Negative possibility is can't or cannot. Necessity is should, need, must and have to. So I can't close this client, I need help. If I do it, I don't see how we can hit target this month. Interesting structure there, if I do it, which basically means if I do try and close this client, I don't see how it's gonna work. We want to find out more, let's go upwards. Is the only purpose of closing the client to hit target this month? Let's go sideways. Is there a different approach you can take? Is there another way to hit target? And let's go downwards. What specific help do you think you need? Do you actually need it or do you just want support? Okay, next one. Cause and effect. A leads to B or B is caused by A. This is where you have one sentence and one part of the sentence is A and the other part of the sentence is B. In the example below, it's the second sentence. A, if I can't learn. B, I will fail. The consequence of me not learning is failing. So it's not my fault, I just don't know how to do it. If I can't learn, I will fail. Let's go upwards. What is the purpose of laying blame when you could just ask, find out, and then you could aim for success? Let's go sideways. So if you don't know how, then you're unwilling to take responsibility? What could you do to take ownership of finding out? Let's go downwards. Have you decided to fail? If you decided to succeed, what would you choose to do then? Just giving people different options by getting down into the specifics. Complex equivalents. A means B, or A equals B. <clears throat> so, the client didn't answer my call. A equals, they probably won't sign. B, hmm. Let's go upwards. Do all your clients stop answering your calls when they decide not to buy? What impact does this thought pattern have on your confidence? Sideways. Have you ever been in a meeting and been unable to answer a call? Could the client have been otherwise engaged? Downwards, what exactly led you to that conclusion? Getting into the specifics. Okay, next, awareness. In NLP, the word awareness represents anything that relates to our senses. See, hear, smell, taste, touch, and feeling words. I could hear their doubt during my presentation, and I feel as if I'm losing my ability to influence their decision. Let's go up. Could the whole team hear doubt? Let's go sideways. Have you ever wanted to do something and use doubt as a tool to get you to certainty? Could questions be buying signals? So effectively, we're giving them another way of perceiving the same situation. Let's go downwards. What does doubt sound like exactly? Okay. Let's have a look at time. If you don't stop speaking to me in that way, I'm never going to get this done on time. Let's go upwards. Are you imagining that everything I do is with the intention of disrupting your schedule? Let's go sideways. What else can you start doing to ensure you get it done on time? Let's go downwards. How does my speaking style impact your ability to complete tasks? How am I speaking to you? Okay. Next, adverb, adjective. Obviously an adverb modifies a verb and an adjective modifies a noun. 
He is such a nice man. I'm sure he'll do a huge amount of business with us. Let's go up. Does every client have to be nice to spend a large amount of money with us? Let's go sideways. What other traits do you enjoy about this person? Let's go downwards. If he were not nice, would you put him down for a small sale? Now, if you wanted to go further down, you might say, so what is it specifically about being nice that makes you imagine that equates to somebody doing a lot of business with us? Okay, let's look at the ors. We have either exclusive ors, which exclude some things, and we have inclusive ors, which include many things. So the example here is an exclusive or. Either you go now or I'll go later. If we want to take it upwards, we say, remind me, what's the purpose of going again? Another way, sideways. Well, what would happen if we sent somebody else? Downwards. Are those the only two options? Could there be more? Are there other ways in which we could do this? How have you come to this conclusion? What is making you say this? And by the way, an inclusive or example would be, would you like to um, go on this road trip on Monday, on Wednesday, or another day that suits you better? So what you're doing is you're leaving everything open-ended. Okay. Okay. Ordinal, just another word for a list. That is the last thing I should do. Now, isn't this interesting? This is one of those statements that gives you evidence that reading things on text or email can give us completely the wrong impression. So, is it, yeah, that is the last thing I should do before we finish this project? Or is is it, that is the last thing I should do in this situation. We just don't know. So we set aside our own filters. We're aware of them and we start questioning. Oh, upwards. What do you get from discounting this option? If it's a, that is the last thing you sh I should do. Or maybe it is a list. Okay, so what other things will you do first? Or maybe it's downwards, and we'll say, when did you first decide that? How do you know? What will you do first? So even though when, first, when people first encounter NLP language, they, <laughs> they do wonder if it's a wonderful way to win arguments. Um, this isn't the purpose of it. <laughs> <laughs> can be very useful. Um, however, the purpose of it is to gain clarification. So we have just been through the nine, the list of nine linguistic assumptions that we cover in NLP, and you will be looking at these in a lot more detail and practicing your responses at the live training. Remind yourself at this point, what we are interested in is what is the assumption behind the mindset? Because we're looking to build a representation of the mind constructs, of the framework, of the belief, belief system, the values, the attitudes of the speaker. So let's just look at a quick statement. He never thought I was any good, so he'll never consider me for this promotion. This isn't an uncommon kind of statement. We all get ideas into our heads. So what we can do is we, we're basically at starting to understand the belief framework and then we want to shine a light. We don't want to tell somebody what we think. We want to guide them to an expanded perspective. So we might say to them, how does it feel, upwards direction, emotions are always top of the tree, how does it feel for you to keep telling yourself that? 
Because this allows the speaker to be aware that they are responsible for diminishing their own confidence. Sideways. That's an interesting statement. Does it allow you to stay in your comfort zone? Are you taking ownership of your career or waiting for somebody else to? This is a pretty hardcore comeback. You want to have a significant level of rapport with somebody before you respond with this kind of question. Let's go downwards. What evidence do you have that he thought you were not any good in the past? Now, be aware As often as possible, we want to use the same construct of language and the same words that the client uses back, okay? Because this allows them to see how their language is impacting their thought process, their emotions, and their behavior. This is the end of your quick overview for language. I hope you found it useful. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one.